This is Ken from Maker's Box, and I'm going to show you today how easy it is to make the Icon Surface Mount uh, solder kit. Uh, start with, I got uh, some tools. I got my solder. I'm using lead tin solder. Uh, solder wicks always helpful. Uh, exacto knife and tweezers are going to be real helpful. And then I've got my uh, Hacko FX888 with the, just a chisel tip on it. Nothing too fancy. And then the other thing that uh, I like to have on hand is flux. It'll help. First thing I want to do is check our kit, see what we get, what we got ourselves up to. And, um, this is the uh, the Heartbreak Red board. I also have a OSH Park Purple that I sell. Um, this is the second version of it, and I've got a lot more gold on here. And I've changed the circuitry a little bit so that it'll light uh, if the LEDs in either way. Um, all the components are on the card here. And we're going to kind of work from left to right as we go. I always like to start with the resistors. Uh, I try and tape these so that the uh, the side that has the actual tape on the component is there. And you can see that resistor popped right out there. Okay, so let's see what we're up against here. Okay, the resistor uh, goes right here. Um, I've got 330 ohm resistors um, with a lithium cell battery. You really don't need a resistor, but uh, it will add to your battery life. Uh, it won't blind you either. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of solder on one of the pads. And of course the iron is heating up. So i got a little bit of solder with a little bit of blob over it. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and as I heat this uh, blob back up, I'm going to uh, put the resistor right in there, give it a second to solidify, and voila, so half of it's in there. All that's left for us to do is add some to the other half. And I hope this is showing up okay on the camera. There's some other uh, really good videos online that I'll show you close-up of uh, surface mount soldering. This is going to be more about uh, how to get this kit done. So there we go. I got our first res uh, component in there, the resistor. Uh, working down the line, the capacitor. Now these uh, components are what are called 1206s, which is uh, like 0.12 inch by 0 0.06 inch. Fairly standard, um, largest that most people use. There are some larger, there are some much, much smaller. If you take a look at my SMB Challenge kit, you'll see how small down they go. But 1206 are a real good uh, starting package because they're fairly easy to handle and they've still got markings on them. Well, the capacitors don't, the resistors do, so you know what the values are. And um, after they get down to like a 402, they don't uh, put the values on. So this is a ceramic capacitor, uh, so it has no polarity, it can go in either way. And we're coming up here, you see on the silk screen it says C1. So again, a little bit of solder on my iron, a little bit of solder on the pad. Yeah, a little more this time, we'll see what happens. Uh, I always kind of cringe when I see people comment on videos about how uh, soldering's not up to IPC standards or the NASA standards, but uh, we're hobbyists and we're learning, so whatever works. And I'll tell you, my soldering's gotten a lot better since I've been doing these kits and stuff, so it's getting almost presentable. So, second side, that one may have just a little bit too much solder in it, but I think it's going to be fine. Alright, second component in, piece of cake, right? So now we're up to our first really tricky guy is the LED. And I say that he's tricky because uh, he's a little more sensitive to the heat than these other two, so we can't um, can't keep the iron on him too long or he'll melt. And he also has a polarity. Um, so if you have magnification, um, you can look at the details of the LED and see the well actually this one is diffuse so that's not going to help you on the back you can see a little mark that's pointing towards the cathode end so that would be the 
negative end and our silk screen is marked with the arrow and line so that's the cathode end. Uh, the other thing you can do that I see the pros do all the time so the smaller packages it gets much harder to see but your uh, multimeter has a diode mode on it and so with that uh, diode mode you can see the the light light up just a little bit there and there it doesn't. Um, the other thing this will tell you is what the forward oh you saw that thing shoot out of there it'll tell you what the forward voltage of the LED is so that could be handy if you're trying to calculate your circuits um, golly so jumping everywhere that's why some of the kits with the smaller components that I sell I'll, I'll put more than one uh, resistor or one LED in there so okay so that's the orientation we think he is I'm not sure if the oh yeah the camera's picking that up and uh, the meters tell me it's got a 1.58 uh, forward voltage which is right typical for red um, the blue LEDs are quite a bit higher about three volts and um, that makes them a little bit tough to run off of a lithium cell alright so we've got a line the way we want and just like the resistance capacitor little blob there and again we're just going to try and do this I get too much heat on here it takes a surprising amount but and then of course if you're super a type you'll want it just exactly so okay so I got the one side in um, flux can be quite a bit of help if you're having trouble um, I'm running my iron at 750 which is a little high for leaded solder um, so if you're getting big bulbs of solder or it looks dry then add a little bit of flux um, okay three components in our hardest one Okay, so now we're down a little left. We're going to put in a surface mount switch here. Uh, there's a lot of different types of switch. I like this one. It's a little bit bigger than most, but it's fairly robust and it's got some nice easy um, leads. Um, the package does have uh, these two locating pins. You see on SW1 is where the switch goes. There's our pads and then the pins. So, and this guy's going to pop right in there and it'll drop into those holes in the, in the thing. So I usually need a solder place or you can do one uh, do the one lead trick here to get it to seat in. So I'm liking that. And you have to check to make sure you're flush. And then I'll come in and heat and try to touch both the pad and the lead and then just give it a little bit of solder and you should see it slide up under there. Give you a nice good mechanical and electrical. That guy's got a bit much. So it's a little hard for me to do because I'm quite a ways away from the action. Alright, so now we're down to our friend the AT Tiny 85, the microcontroller. And again, like the LED, we're gonna just do one lead first. So this is a SOC8 lead package, which is fairly large as packages go. Um, so these chips have a pin one indicator. It's usually a little um, dash or a dot on the on the chip package and on, on these beginner kits I like to put a little red dot so it's easier for you to see and then you see on the silk screen there's a little red dot so this guy is going to line up right like that and then we really just need to get that first pin with the solder and you can heat up a little bit and then introduce it and I'm looking at both the top and the bottom trying to get them just centered they don't have to be perfect but you want to get them close and so I'm looking at where the pads are at and I'm a little bit off on these but that's close enough and then um, 
There's a couple techniques on chips. Um, I typically just solder pin by pin. I guess it depends on your tip. And then if you uh, if you blob over a little bit, then we'll bring the solder wick in, and I'll show you how to do that here. If I don't blob over, let's see how good my camera can. So those are far from perfect, but again, we're beginning solders and we're having fun and this is easy right we're just cranking away here and so what to do there is give like a purposeful solder bridge you know this is typically what will happen is you get too much solder in there and it's just all over the place so what we're going to need to do is bring in our handy solder wick um, so solder wick has some flux in it that helps you out so if you've got some spots you've already used before you might work your way up a bit to get some fresh flux or you can add flux with your pen so I just uh, hit it down there gave a little bit of heat and I could see it wick away and you see it cleared all those three pads away really nicely really quickly so and uh, those will actually look pretty good on a on a pad you want to see a little bump where the leg is and um, you actually look behind the leg and you're not going to see it in this video but if you see some close ups on the web you'll see what a really good looking joint is so that front end of the board is uh, done and we just need to get our battery holder on here so this uh, battery holder is going to be a little bit tricky because um, they suck a lot of heat out and it's a lot of metal but again I'm going to do the one pad first um, and this is the last component on my thing so there's a, a little circle here where your finger can pull the LED or the I'm sorry the battery and I usually have that facing downward it really doesn't matter a whole lot on this other than I think if you go this way you're going to run into here. I've got a little mounting pin so let's put that facing downward and you might need something to hold this. This heats up uh, pretty good. Um, it's just like a giant radiator so it takes me a couple of times to get this uh, kind of situated the way I want so I'm going to heat in Try and get those leads to drop in flush as that solder mounts. And kind of feel it drops in on the pad there. And I've gotten it's just starting to warm up on my finger. And um, double checking the alignment. Actually, they're pretty good. A lot of times you have to move it around a little bit. So this side we can just come in and just kind of flood fill that. So we're getting a little bit of heat up on the pads because that's we want the uh I'm sorry the the legs and that's looking pretty good and then we can come over here and add a little bit if we need to. Uh if you don't get this uh well um if you drop it it'll pop off and then you just have to fix it so not a big deal okay and with that uh, my kits I usually don't ship batteries because the US postal system thinks they're gonna catch on fire and explode so you're gonna have to buy your own locally or get them off Amazon um, that's still pretty warm um, there's a little dot to indicate the on position so I turned it off um, batteries usually have a plus and that goes on the back side and there we go. I'm not sure if that's showing up in the camera or not. So it is, uh, sometimes I use a diffuse LED. Uh, I'm running some code from uh, MIT that does kind of a heartbeat, a heartbeat pattern. So that's pretty cool. And um, that just leaves us one last thing is uh, if you want to wear this as a pen to show all your friends that you now can surface mount solder. I have these, uh, I believe these are called Titac clutches. I'm having trouble finding ones I like, but uh, they're usually a little short. This one here is a 10 millimeter, which is what I like. 
They come with a little tang on them, so we'll take that tang off. And I'm giving you a nice big pad. So the other option is to run a um, uh, a ring through there. I can't remember what the jewelers call that, but um, a jump ring, I think. And put it on a necklace. So I'm gonna. So that's why it's got the hole. Or you could do this. And you're definitely going to need some tweezers because this guy heats up rapidly. And just to get that solder to the right temperature, you'll feel it drop in place. Easier said than done. This could be the hardest part of this whole project here, huh? Sometimes if you heat it up uh, before you bring your part in and then just kind of slide in place, Make sure it's flush and give it a second to cool. And you are now ready to show the world that you love SMD. Alright, so hopefully I convinced you that, that was easy, something you can do and take. Um, if you have some suggestions for people that are learning how to solder, good videos, you can post those in the links. and. Um, Again, thanks for watching. This is Ken from Maker's Box.